This is the new Walther PDP steel frame. Specifically, this is the compact model. These were introduced in the polymer model, 2020-2021 timeframe. Walther, in our phone call, effectually calls this the unholy union of a duty gun and a race gun. And today we find out if that holds true. Also the replacement of the Q steel frame Walthers, which were their more competition models. As I said, this is supposed to be the unholy union of both duty and race gun. We reviewed the PDP Palmer several years ago, and both of us were pleasantly surprised with how that gun performs. Today, let's see if this can meet those same expectations and or exceed them with the steel frame being one of the biggest differences. Outside of the steel frame, what else is there? Do we still get the great out of the box striker fire pistol? Do we still get a good, nice grip angle like these PDPs are known for? And then of course, does it come optics cut? But before we go any further into those features and what the steel frame brings, we wanna talk about relationship with Walther. We always try to be honest and upfront with you guys, especially when working directly with manufacturers on those relationships. We met with Walther at the media day at SHOT Show this year, threw about six rounds through this, and they asked if we were interested in any of the other lineup to, to shoot and review. And I said I'd prefer this compact to really test that duty gun race gun theory. I also made it very clear that even though they're gonna send us the gun to review, we're still upfront and honest with all our opinions. And Walther said, send. Here we go, Bill Drill, freaking burn it down. Two, four, five, solid. Okay. You know what else pairs well with this uh, Walther? Being James Bond's gun. Very much. James Bond's watch, or Omega, in this case. Seamaster. Right? Seamaster. Classic. Absolutely classic. That watch is uh, actually on loan to us. I know that sounds very bizarre. Who in their right mind would loan us an Omega Seamaster for a Walther video. That'd be our friends over at Wolven. They're the sponsor for today's video. So they're a new sponsor of the channel. Something yeah. I think on a personal level, we're actually pretty excited about because um, they're basically luxury watch dealers. They're based in DFW, uh, family run business. They ship all over the nation if you don't live in Dallas or Plano specifically. Yeah. Um, but hey, Omega, Panerai, I mean, if you want to go real crazy, the AP, Patex, the Patex, the, uh, you know. Richard Mills. Yeah, I mean, all the kind of crazy stuff. Vacheron, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys are into luxury watches, we're going to start doing some watch gun pairings in yep. some of the videos. We'll try to keep it non-invasive, but a lot of you guys ask us about watches. Yeah. Um, but check out the Wolven guys. They're really cool. The whole watch paired with videos things we're really excited about. So check them out. We'll have them linked down in the video description. Back on with the freaking show. Outside of the, what, six rounds you shot at SHOT Show? Yeah. Okay. On the Walther steel frame? Mm -hmm. We're going to have you do your first, second first impression, I guess, right? right we're going to do probably two full mags. Okay. Just to see how you like the gun and how it runs. Okay. Okay. So, cool. not one in the chamber, but I'll hand you the mag. Let's see this bad boy. All right. So... I would not call this a lightweight firearm. <laughs> it's the first thing you notice? <laughs> I mean, it is, you know, also, it's called the steel frame for a reason. It's meant to be heavy. You yep. know, it's like, it's not shade. It's just like, yeah, she's a heavy gun. Yep. No doubt about that. A little thicker. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but that said, the grip feels good. I like the big old fat. Um, Palm swell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like you can really get, you know, really, really get in there. So, how light is this mag release? All right. I'm going to game my grip a little bit, everyone. 
because I can already tell with that mag release, I'll wind up dropping the mag just because of lefty dynamics. You know, I, I mean, look, I'm not a big polymer. Well, I guess I can't say that. We're gonna make um, that mistake a lot. Striker fire <laughs> striker gun. Striker fire gun uh, guy. And I don't shoot them that often, but for a striker fire gun, it's very soft shooting. And that's a zone steel too. You know, that's pretty yeah. small steel and we're at what, 15? Yep. 15 yards? Yeah. Got one more 15 magnet. give or take. Um, Go ahead and do like a two right target, two left target. First of all, can he even miss today? I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. I mean, that was some good shooting, dude. For a striker fire gun, I've, I've never yeah. shot before. Hey, for I'll take it, everyone. Relax. You know you have those days on the range where you're like, come on, fellas. You got you to gotta send it. Um, dude, it's a nice shooting gun. And, and mind you, you know, the thing with these first impressions is we've never shot these guns before. So it's yeah. like when you shoot one of mine, I shoot one of yours. It's like... We've not gamed this. No, I've no, not, not at shot all. this. Like I expect to suck at first. Yeah, outside of the six rounds I shot and six rounds you shot at Shot Show. Yeah, we got no um, time on that outside of this. Truthfully, so. the trigger is is money. Like it, it's a really really nice striker fire trigger. Like excellent actually. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. That's what I got. Move on. So first thing I noticed before even picking the gun up at the shop, when I opened the box without the optic and light obviously, is the boxiness of the slide. The boxiness, though, I think is cut up very nicely with the slide cuts that also aid in press checking and just overall aesthetic look of the gun, right? Next thing we do, or that I personally do, is when I'm writing a video, Jake is similar, is I'll have the gun out, I'll be playing with the gun, dry firing the trigger, feeling the grip angle, feeling the texture, and how that all plays out. So let's throw a couple rounds through this. The next thing that is very apparent when you pick up the gun is the weight. This gun, unloaded again without optic and light, comes in at right around 40 ounces, which we're gonna touch on a little bit later. What that aids in is very, very quick follow-up shots. That weight keeps the gun very flat to the point where I don't see the dot leave the window whatsoever, so. Next noticeable thing picking the gun up is the frame. These Walthers, uh, the, the polymer as well as this steel frame, have a texture that is just grippy enough to where it doesn't feel like you're gonna lose the gun during shooting or long strings of fire, but not so texturized that it's annoying while concealed carrying it, right? Talking more about the weight without getting a little too long-winded. Most people I took shooting this gun during the review process are competition shooters local to me in Phoenix. One thing that they like in their competition guns is a little bit added weight, whether that's with a light or a steel frame gun itself adding to that weight. Shooting the polymer next to the steel, everyone that shot those side by side on the range that same day at same time, all agree that there's probably a 40 to 50% difference in overall recoil and felt recoil from the steel frame to the polymer. Talking more with Walther about this and talking to their designers who are also shooters, which is a big point to make about this gun, that shooters and competition shooters help design it, is the weight being a factor to the tune of about 25 to 30% felt recoil reduction and overall recoil. So, talking to Walther, some of these competition shooters and my personal experience, I think that that cut is right around that 40% mark of overall felt recoil. All right, so you're gonna run a build drill with the PDP steel frame. On steel? Yep. Shooter ready? Stand by. Very good. 179, no misses. Okay. And we, we started pointed in just to kind of do an apples to apples thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no risk of from one gun I lost the dot, the other I didn't. Correct. Okay, okay cool. Yep. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the same thing pointed in, but with the Palmer frame now. Okay. Shooter ready? Stand by. You have one miss there? I thought I heard six dings, but I also saw a puff of dirt, so I don't know. Okay. And your total time for that was 196. Okay, it felt slower. Felt slower? It, and I was working much harder to keep dot 
returning to target. Okay. Yeah. And that's exactly what I wanted to kind of talk about with the steel frame versus the polymer. So. Yep. Fair point. All right. Do you understand the course of fire? Absolutely. Shooter ready. Stand by. Guys, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel, I know you're furious right now. If you're looking for any ways to support the channel, we would love it. You you watching this does support us, uh, but hey, if you want to take it up a notch, um, we've got our Patreon. That's, uh, you get some behind the scenes stuff. We've got uh, some degree of private classes that we sort of host in conjunction with an instructor. We are doing one later this year, not spoiling the tea here. Um, 1911 Syndicate at its core, it's a real estate brand. You can reach out to us. Um, help people buy and sell houses all over the country. Just go to the website, 1911syndicate.com. Other than that, really do appreciate your guys' support. Without you guys watching, we're just a couple assholes out in the desert. You know what I mean? Yep. So anyway, all right, back on with it. With the PDP steel frame being the next evolution of the PDP lineup, we see a common trend with Walther and having several phone calls with Walther, they made it very clear to me. Going back to the P99, Walther likes to tweak and upgrade a gun over time until there's just so many things done to it they make a new model. From the P99, we go to the PPQ. From the PPQ, that also had a competition model, the Q5 steel match, we go to the PDP Palmer, and then from there it evolves further to this steel frame, which brings us to today. I think something can be said about companies that have some legacy products that we've all known for years, that they are willing to listen to the market. From changes made on the PPQ to the steel frame, from the Palmer PDP to the steel frame, Walther likes to listen to the market, and a good example of that is optics cut. Back in the day with the P99, that was not so much a thing manufacturers were doing from the factory, right? But as we've seen with time and as the market progresses and technology progresses, Walther listens real intently on what people want. All their guns ship from the factory with optics cut. Great thing about Walther too is they do provide one free plate depending on what optic you want to run. I wanted to run an Acro, so after purchasing the gun, you send in a form to Walther. They give you one free plate of the optics of your choosing, from RMRs to Acros, which I find to be value added. They're not wasting money, I guess, on sending multiple plates. They're asking you what plate you're planning on running. They ship that accordingly. As Walther expanded on the PDP line going into the steel frame, they made several different steel frame models as well. This being the four inch compact, they have a four and a half inch model. And then they have the PDP steel frame match, which is a five inch model with a flat faced trigger that also has a different trigger weight to it. So you can kind of cover the gamut of what you're really wanting to do between the steel frame, if you want it just for duty and some competition use, if you want a little bit longer barrel with the four and a half for that added accuracy and performance that you're looking for, all the way to those match steel steel frames as well. There are some slight changes between the Palmer and the steel frame model. One of the biggest changes is the rail geometry is slightly different. So holster compatibility is gonna be different. It's not gonna be a direct holster for both. Another big change is on the Palmer, there's a two-sided spring-loaded takedown lever. On the steel frame, it's just a single-sided standard takedown lever. And then last but not least, right where your magazine release is, there's no ledge here on the steel frame that had to be machined out. On the polymer model, there is just a slight ledge right here that your middle finger kind of leans against instead of leaning against the mag release. Other than that, the guns are almost identical, just a few slight changes, and of course, the steel frame itself. Jake, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Very excited to be out here in the desert with you boys today. Yeah, glad you're that excited. You've never been this excited, but getting kind of towards the tail end of the video here, talking about the Walther steel frame compact model. Yep. The question is, especially after you shot some rounds on it now, you've been here while I've been doing the video and talking about it, does that kind of hit the unholy union of a duty gun and race gun? Oh man, jeez. Now I this feel, is a little tough. This is so tough. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, you could look at something like a staccato and go, okay, for sure. Like you're, you, it's like, I feel like that one's an easy yes. Like a P? Yeah, okay. it's like kind of an easy yes. Yeah. Um, you know, this is in that hybrid. So, so my immediate answer, to that is, I think the five inch could do that. Okay. I feel like the, I was about to call this a commander, but it's not a 1911, <laughs> a uh, compact. Compact four inch. Um, is, uh, I would actually really be curious as to if, if you could pull a hundred people that own the four inch version of this, what they bought it with the intent of using it for. Cause I feel like the five inch really could go any direction. And I feel like I don't quite know which direction that goes. Yeah. Yeah, and my, my answer to that, so funny, I brought up 
the Staccato P is one of those potential crossover guns. Yeah. We have crossover vehicles. Let's call it a crossover gun. Sure. I'm going to stamp that right yeah, now. Yeah, stamp that. Copyright, Copyright that. Copyright. Everybody right? shut your mouth. You know, a P with a four to four and a half inch trigger. This comes from factory, or sorry, pound trigger, four, four and a half pound trigger. These come from the factory with what they say a five pound trigger plus or minus a pound. Uh, to me, okay. it feels lighter. It feels closer to the four mark. Okay. Getting into the competition five inch model, right? That has some lightning cuts to make it a little more flashy for that and a different flat faced lighter trigger. Okay. So kind of leaning into what you're saying. Okay, about. okay. My idea behind the compact and then even the full size, which is a four and a half inch barrel, is if you're really wanting it for a duty gun, but also there's guys that are now really carrying like Glock 19s and then going to compete with them. Yeah. Maybe you're not gonna be a grandmaster, whiz bang, whatever they call them, but you want a gun that you can reliably carry duty wise or CCW, but then also that's your competition gun so you can double dip on training. I could see right? that, yeah. You I see that see. more with those, right? I, I agree, yeah. Okay. What about weight wise? Talk to me about the weight, Jake. Uh, I think that depends on what you're intending to use this for. Yep. I, I think if you were gonna CCW this, um, for me it would be too, too heavy for a CCW gun. Too heavy. Um, that said, I'm not a huge dude, so it's like bigger dude might be able to pull it off. For me, it would be a bit weighty, but um, I like heavy guns. I just don't necessarily want to carry, carry a heavy an, an extremely heavy gun, you yeah. know? I mean, that gun is heavy enough to to the tune of this when you were shooting it and it wasn't on my hip, there's a noticeable difference just in the way my belt is and like consciously, because sometimes that's a subconscious thought, consciously I'm like, man, I feel like I dropped a couple pounds out here right? because that's not hanging off your hip, Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been concealed carrying that, just trying to yeah, merge yeah. both. Go about the process. Um, yeah. I've been carrying it in a tier one concealed MSP holster because that index is off the light, so it fits, you know, 100 different guns. Got it. And then also to help distribute that weight a little bit more, I've been wearing the emissary belt from Segera. A mm -hmm. little bit thicker, right? A little bit more stiff, so it distributes that weight a little bit yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But it is possible. Again, I am a, a big dude and I can hide guns fairly easy. Mm -hmm. So so with this coming from the factory with three mags, which most competition shooters, you know, you're gonna carry three mags. Mm -hmm. The round count within the mag, 15 rounds, makes it so you can shoot most stages with that. Yeah. So I think that adds to the duty a little bit. Sure. Um, the biggest hang up that I think some people are gonna have with this is price point, Jake. Okay. Um, we've talked about this already, but these come in a little steep with the full MSRP of $16.99. Street price right around that 1500 price range. Kay. Okay. Um, I think if you're really looking for, as I mentioned before, a gun that you're going to CCW and duty, but also want to compete at a fairly high level, mm -hmm. um, this is kind of the gun for you because you're going to be able to justify the weight for the performance in competition. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Price point, though, again, unless you really want to find that, that lane to stay in, we can buy two and a half of the Palmers for the price of one steel. You know, it's tricky because you look at it and um, not to try to keep bringing staccato into the conversation, but if you were if you were to say, all right, a, a staccato that, that does this double duty of, uh, you, know, you know, duty and race, or whatever you go, well, that's a thousand bucks more than this, right? So it's like, that right. is a significant amount of money. So we can't act like, well, it's like, oh, just get a staccato. It's like, eh, staccato is an extra grand, you know? So it's like, th that's not apples to apples, but you go, okay, you know, you get a standard PDP. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, truthfully, I really dig the steel frame. I, I, it's almost like, hey, if I'm trying to do duty, like like overt duty and competition, I'll get the full length steel frame. And if it's more of like, bro, I'm really just looking for a CCW gun, my gut says I'd probably just get the, the polymer one. Yeah, yeah, it's really, if, if you're trying to justify that price point, if you're really trying to blur those lines of competition and duty gun. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think that that moniker, you know, of unholy union of duty gun and race gun. Clever marketing, by the way, whoever came up with that. Brilliant. And talking to Walter, sidebar about this, talking to them, people weren't too excited about that. I'm like, guys, that's an like incredible little saying. And the guy who came up with that, props to you. Because yeah. that's that's really good. Yeah, good. That's right? good. My final ranking on this, having taken some competition guys out shooting, doing the little bit of competition stuff we do, and concealed carrying every day, right? What do you got? I'm going to give this gun a solid B+. Plus. Okay. I think it really, if, if it really is a gun you're trying to blur those lines... I think that this fits the bill. Reliability wise, I've had zero malfunctions. It's got a great trigger. I would say the best striker fired trigger out of the box. It's a great, it, and, and I would even also note, I really think just playing with them both right now that the steel frame trigger is better than the polymer trigger. It's a little smoother. Yeah, it it's is. It's a little more crisp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I factored that into the polymer rubbing against the metal components. Yeah. 
metal on metal is going to be less friction, especially with some lube in between. It just feels smoother. Yeah, well, lube pretty much lube, makes Lube everything. helps with that, right? So better. solid B plus, guys. I really enjoyed the gun. I think, uh, again, if you're looking for that, that gun to fill both roles, this is the gun for you. If you I want primarily it. just a competition gun, five inches is probably more your style. Right on. Having said that, though, if you were in a legally justified self-defense scenario, you would want... Firearms legal protection. I'll give you an example. So you're filming, you're at the end of your Walther PDP video and your videographer's phone goes off. Does that count as legally justified self-defense shooting? Does it count? I don't know. What, what do you think? You're the rookie with the phone going off. New guy. I that I'm such a good audio engineer that your mics didn't even pick it up. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And you know what? If no one ever sees them again, Whoops. I don't know what happened to them. I don't know what happened to them. The good news, they're doing a giveaway. They uh, are. FLP's doing a giveaway for hopefully not situations like this. But what is the giveaway uh, thing? It's a three-month individual plan, okay, for your state specifically. Yeah. Okay. This also will have uncapped attorney fees like their other packages, okay? Mm -hmm. It'll also have an attorney hotline. So when you call, you're talking to an attorney. Yep. Not a customer service rep. Brad. And we're going to link all that in the description below. Yeah. I think it's, you've got to, um, yeah, you click on the link uh, for our like little partner page. It'll be down the video description and they'll have a little like register for the giveaway thing. And I think it's open for 48 hours after the video. So it's like, hey, you got 48 hours, go register th three month, you know, um, subscription or whatever membership, you know, won't cost you guys anything. Nope. Um, so it's cool. You know, Winners it will be randomly drawn and FOP will reach out as soon as they draw that winner. Hell yeah, okay. super nice of them, appreciate it. All right, that's it boys.